Hello and welcome to episode 30 of Linux After Dark. I'm Joe. I'm Chris. I'm Gary. And I'm Dalton. Welcome back, chaps. So today, I want to ask you a question. And that is, what keeps us going with Linux and FOSS? It feels like our faith in it has been tested like no other point so far. And maybe faith is the wrong word for it, because we've actually seen evidence of it doing really good stuff. But why do we stick with it in the face of so much opposition? I take it here you're talking about Linux for consumer uses on the desktop or free and open source software on your phone or stuff like that? Yeah, I would say so, because, yeah, clearly, server-wise, it just makes sense and doesn't have any competition, really. I think for me, it's always been the possibility to change things up. Not that I necessarily actually do that as much as I might have done at first, because I think, I don't know, a lot of people I've spoken to that use desktop Linux, when they first discover it, have a period of looking what's available. I never really got into actually reinstalling the bare metal a lot, but I would do a lot of looking in virtual machines, thinking is the grass greener before I settled on Ubuntu Mate. But I do like the idea that I can change it. And like, we always talk about our stack of laptops. And sometimes I'll get a machine where I think I'm going to try something different on this, like with the touchscreen trial. And it's the idea that you can make that change, even though it can be sometimes painful to get going or keep going as you keep upgrading it and as things change. I like the idea that if something is not working the way that I like it, I can change it up. And I just don't feel like I would feel that way if I used, on the desktop certainly, Windows or Mac OS as much. If I I don't like something, for example, I've been using Windows 11 a little bit to troubleshoot for users at work. And I cannot stand that when you right click on the desktop, there's only 50% of the options available, (laughs) including not having copy and paste. So you have to right click and then go to the advanced right click menu or something it's called or full back menu. And then you get the old fashioned one. Now, apparently in a feature update that's about to come out, they're going to change that and make it more easy to get to. But I couldn't change that very easily. And and I couldn't go, I'm just going to use a different desktop environment because this annoys me so much. See, I find that interesting because for me, one of the reasons I've stuck with Ubuntu on the desktop for quite a while now is because it doesn't change. What I quite like about Linux is that predictable, stable, rarely changing set of features that I get. And all right, you know, there have been a few desktop changes over the years from GNOME to Unity to back to GNOME again. But what there has been is a relatively consistent UX, in my opinion certainly from Unity to GNOME the second time around, that just means that I can give Linux to my mum, for example, and know that since 1204, she's basically had the same experience. I feel like that doesn't get to the whole faith of being tested thing. Joe, can you elaborate on that? So I know I'm not supposed to talk about this, but Apple Silicon, basically. Oh. I was thinking about upgrading my workstation, and I was thinking about the various options And I could go possibly AMD or Intel. Or then I was thinking I could just get a Mac and do most of what I need to do with Mac OS and then have VMs or possibly Asahi for the bits of Linux that I actually need. But then I really thought about it and I thought, no, I don't want to go down that route. I don't want to be locked into the software that they want me to run. And I don't want them to just abandon it at some point and then just have it be useless. And okay, yeah, Asahi has got very good and it's come a long way but it's not on a par yet and may never be through no fault of the asahi team just because it's very tricky hardware to to deal with but no i want to have that control over the hardware i want to be able to run whatever i want to run on it and that includes virtually any version of linux windows if i really wanted to i mean i could probably hack mac os on there in a pinch And it's just that being able to tinker with it, being able to do what I want and not being told what to do. Uh, Yeah, I I definitely see that. You know, we've been talking about this even in our little Telegram group. Like, you keep telling me, you can just buy an iPhone now every time I post an Android phone. Yeah. It's like, (laughs) yeah, but I don't want an iPhone. You know, there are still downsides to going with the things that aren't 
FOSS are at least mildly open. And it feels like we know about those, so even though we know we could get the convenience by going elsewhere, you just can't pull the trigger on that. Well, even though I have pulled the trigger on that, I'm still sitting here daily driving a Linux machine with an M1 Mac sat in the drawer next to me. Yeah, I I feel like it's the seams where things start to creep in where I make decisions. And it's when it becomes so... like. When, when it comes to desktop computing, I still feel like running desktop Linux, I can do pretty much everything that I want to do on the machine. And I'd, I'd never feel like, oh, this would be so much easier if I ran Windows. I'm not a huge gamer. And even now, gaming is getting a lot better. The compatibility layers like Proton are making it drop in more and more. The one area where I do find that ball ache is media consumption and also media consumption I'm putting into the hands of others where they're not necessarily used to tinkering. And I do want certain things to just work. My phone is also starting to get that way. This week, again, one of my banking apps that I'd managed to jump through about 10 hoops to get working, stopped working. And I wanted to make a quick transfer. And increasingly, the banks are starting to do 2FA via the app. And so If you can't open the app on your phone, then you're like, right, I can't approve this transaction. So I just pay with a different card if they're not going to offer SMS to FA, which I'm not keen on either, because I don't think we should be using that anymore. It's, It's time to stop using that. And so that's where I think the boundary line is. I will continue to use Linux as long as I don't get to hard points where I'm having to make like huge swerves to accommodate for running it. And I don't think that I'm I'm there yet, but I, I do feel like I'm a pragmatist. I feel like if I was a bit more, I don't know, system dealers or only free software, I would already be making a lot more of those compromises. I do have proprietary software on my installation of desktop Linux, for example. So I'm not a purist, but I don't know if the M1 is going to be too much of a draw yet. I I still look at it every now and again and would like the battery life and the power, but I'm not quite there yet. Yeah, I think for me, there are enough things that still draw me to desktop Linux that I'm willing to make those compromises on battery life or power consumption or whatever else, because it's just an environment that I like working in. I enjoy working in. I've got tools built to kind of help me do what I need to do. And Despite owning a Mac, there is just something about Linux. It's almost that comfy pair of slippers that have been chewed by the dog for the last five years and are falling apart and you should probably get rid of. (laughs) But there's just something about it that pulls me back. And it's happened every single time I've tried to switch away from Linux for the last 10 or so years. And I can't quite put my finger on it. There's a whole bunch of stuff, but there is definitely something there. Well, I know exactly what you mean because my wife went away for a couple of weeks recently. And so I thought, right, I'm going to use the uh, M1 MacBook Air as kind of a daily driver laptop, not for work stuff, but just for watching YouTube and stuff because the speakers are excellent. And then she came back and then I needed to use headphones again. And I thought, well, actually, I'll just go back to Linux, which I actually much, much prefer. I much prefer the file manager, for example. I mean, I've complained enough about Finder before, (laughs) but it is just terrible. (laughs) I'm on Linux, like, okay, I'm running Zubuntu. It's uh, got Thunar by default. If I don't like Thunar for some reason, I could install one of the others. I could install, there's probably hundreds of file managers, including, you know, CLI-based ones if I really wanted to. Whereas on the Mac, yeah, I'm sure there are some, but it's not as easy to change it or I don't know is someone going to blow my mind and tell me yeah you can install a decent file manager on there I mean if they haven't yet (laughs) well if you are listening to this and are saying oh no you can get a decent file manager that actually can talk to a server share and not take five minutes Thunar for (laughs) mac os yeah yeah exactly there must be a way to like brew install it or something but I haven't got any of that installed at the moment it's very much stock mac os But just little things like that, just knowing that, you know, there there are a few annoying things on a default Linux installation. Like, uh, for example, default is Ubuntu. The panel's in the wrong place. It's just in the wrong place. It's at the top. What's it doing there? It should go on the bottom. (laughs) 
And so what do I do? I just change it in about 30 seconds, 10 seconds even. And then it's on the bottom exactly how I want it. Whereas with the proprietary operating systems, it's much harder to do that. And with proprietary software generally, it seems to be harder to configure it and make it your own. I think that's just what it boils down to. I'm a bit of a control freak. I want things exactly how I want them. I'm very particular, some might say fussy, and I don't like change very much. And so you can have all of those things really easily with Linux, but you can't necessarily have them with a proprietary offering. Mac OS recently just totally changed the settings thing to make it more like iOS, and it's terrible. I hate it, but I'm just forced to use it on the Mac, whereas if they change that in XFCE, then I could probably find someone who's forked the old one or just switched to Mate or something like that. Yeah, that new settings app is terrible. It's, I still remains to be seen what the future holds. Uh, I was quite excited when the Apple chips came out, but I've settled now into accepting that I, I might get an M1 MacBook Air when they become quite cheap. The difficulty there is, as you say, Joe, what state will Asahi be in? I've never tried it, so I can't comment on what it's like now. But buying an old Mac means you're a certain percentage through the official support span that Apple is going to give that piece of hardware. I feel like you could buy one in a few years and it would still be incredibly capable, but you'd have that ticking clock. Yeah, but they've got soldered SSDs as well, which, okay, some Windows machines and potentially even some Linux machines have as well, but that level of locked downness and integration. Yeah, it, it's a huge problem as well. That's another reason that would hold me back as well. I agree. It's like cars, and I hate car analogies. They always come up. But <laughs> I am the type of person that I remember a man with a fag hanging out of his mouth on a Sunday afternoon, lifting the car up on bricks, stripping it down, cleaning all the parts, putting it back together again. That's what I want to be able to do with my computer forever. And I'm now like those old men who buy a new car and are convinced to part exchange. They go in for the service and they're like, I couldn't do anything myself because I need to plug a computer into it. And I don't want to be like that. I want to know, and I choose the laptops that I buy most of the time based on that. I want to know there's a service manual. I want to know there's a huge number of parts available. And I want to know that I can get a rudimentary toolkit and not have to buy anything special and strip it down to its constituent parts and replace anything that breaks and keep it going and keep it going and keep it going. That's part of the attraction for me. So when I ran my repair business, people would call me for Apple hardware repairs and I just thought, I can't do it. Take it to someone else. And it really made me not want to have one. So that that is a huge problem. If someone could make a modular version <laughs> of something as powerful as the M1 architecture with all of the battery life and everything, I'd be a lot more excited, I think. So what you're saying is you tried the new stuff and decided you'd like the old stuff better. <laughs> it's happening again. <laughs> so I had a Chromebook R11 until recently. Chris has got one of them as well. It's recently gone out of support with Chrome OS. It's been abandoned. It's pretty easy to get Linux installed on it, but it's only got a 16 gigabyte SSD, which again is soldered. So I hung on to it because it's a cool touchscreen machine, but it was just too slow to be useful for anything. I've got other laptops in my stack. I thought, right, I'm going to just give this to someone. And my brother needed a laptop, so right, he can have it. And so I asked him, do you want it? And he said, yes. And I said, well, it can only really run Linux. Why? Can't it run Windows? Well, it's only got a 16 gig SSD, so not really. Uh, why can't it run just Chrome OS? Well, it's not supported anymore. Well, that's fine. I'll just use it. No, it's not. It's a security risk. No, it's fine. No, I'm not giving it to you with Chrome OS on it. <laughs> it's getting Linux. What Linux do you want? As close as Windows as possible. And make it just auto-update. Like, okay, fine, whatever. And so I put Zubuntu on it because I knew I was going to get support calls. Well, just before we were going to record, I got a text from him. How can I open a zip file without typing a load of nerd stuff? And what I had done was installed Zubuntu Minimal because it's a 16 gigabyte SSD. It only had a couple of gigabytes left, even with a minimal installation. And uh, so I hadn't installed Engrampa on it, and it seems that isn't part of the minimal installation, which is fair enough. And so I have to tell him, you know, sudo apt update, sudo apt install Engrampa. And uh, he's like, oh, I'll deal with it tomorrow. I'm tired now. And he, I said to him, why do you want a zip file anyway? Firefox. 
So, well, Firefox is already installed, but it's a snap and that takes ages to open. It's like, oh, it's all Greek to me. Oh, I can't deal with this. It's that that kind of tests my faith, I guess, as well. I think what we've really arrived at is we would really love to use, you know, software that, I mean, don't take this the wrong way. We'd all really love to use software that worked, (laughs) but we like having these other features of the hardware and software more than doing the same thing that everyone else does and just getting on with life. Feels like in some way we're kind of holdouts of something that is either dying or has already died. (laughs) That is the frustrating thing because with the phone situation, I think, oh, I'll get an iPhone, but then I'll think about it for a week or so. And then I'll look back over the things I've done in a week and I've gone, ah, I wouldn't be able to do something like use Termux to install YTDLP in a python virtual environment and start pulling videos down do you see what i mean and i did do that in this last week it was incredibly useful because i was out and about and i was like i really wish i didn't have to use new pipe for this and there must be a command line way what has termux got i looked and youtube dl's there but then i was like oh actually you can just install ytdlp in a virtual env and it works brilliantly with ffmpeg and everything and I was like, why, why would I ever buy an iPhone? Then I went to open my banking app and was like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so yeah, I think you're right, Dalton. Like, this is the difficult thing. I want everything. And I feel like maybe I'm going to be like a drug dealer in the end and have an iPhone and like, so I'm going to have this like incredibly pure, like pure white source in one pocket and then a crack pipe in the other for just the quick hit of that decent Termax stuff. So yeah, it's... It, but it, I feel like it is schisming and it's maybe it's just because I'm getting a bit older, but it feels like it's harder to spin both those plates at the same time. No, it totally is. The, only a few years ago, you could get SMS from your bank. You didn't have to use their app. Also, why can't banks implement TOTP? Come on. That's it. And th- these are the same banks that some of them have incredibly crap password policies when you're trying or they'll disable Uh, copy and pay so you can't use your password manager all these awful decisions which uh, someone thinks are better and they're not and has passed through enough eyes to be implemented so uh, i feel like grandpa simpson is is appearing and waving his fist at the clouds again so is the solution to have a stack of phones (laughs) (laughs) I think it really is. And my stack of laptops at least have two laptops, one running macOS and one running Linux. I mean, that's the conclusion that I've landed on. There are things that I need the Mac to do, like backing up the photos off of my iPhone. And there are things that Linux does better, like everything else. So I really need both. That can't be the solution. We can't just keep coming to the same conclusion. (laughs) (laughs) Buy more things and have them in in every drawer. (laughs) Capitalism, that is the solution to all our problems. But capitalism is what got us into this situation. Exactly. All the problems that capitalism caused are solved by capitalism. Ah, the situation has been made worse with the addition of yet more bees. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's either that, right, or we choose not to participate in these things. And we just say, no, I only use Linux. No, I only have AOSP on my phone. And you just struggle along. And you become one of those people who only pays in cash or only uses Firefox with no DRM installed. Or forces their family to uh, listen to Beatles records on the ukulele. Exactly. And you you just opt (laughs) out of most of modern society. And it's... It's a choice you have to make, and it feels like more and more, to be pragmatic, there isn't a choice but to live in both worlds at this point. Oh man, that's a real boiled frog situation we find ourselves in. And I think it's too late. We're boiling. Just as we thought we were winning, the water reached 100 degrees. (laughs) (laughs) No, I disagree. I think that you can do almost everything with just Linux. And yeah, you miss out on a few things, but I don't think you have to be totally unplugged from society. You just have to pick a bank that doesn't do bullshit like that. You have to communicate with people who are willing to use open protocols. Which is all well and good until you receive a WhatsApp message from someone and you never see it. Well, fuck them, basically, is is the only conclusion you can come to. Either you have to participate or you just have to not care about not participating and stuff like that. And just tell them, no, I don't use WhatsApp anymore. I can't. Sorry. 
yeah, no, you're right. It's it's not a case of opting out of modern society. That was a bit hyperbole. But yeah, you just have to accept that there are sacrifices that you need to make in order to use the technology you want to use. I mean, yeah, there are some places where you are actually opting out of society because of proprietary apps to like get into all banks or stuff like that. But I guess in the UK and US, it's probably more possible to be a digital hermit. Yeah, I think in some countries you do need specific apps to just function, to be able to send payments and stuff. But yeah, certainly in this country, you can get by, I think, with potentially a dumb phone or an AOSP phone, as he said, Triscoll on your laptop, on your uh, Core 2 Duo ThinkPad. <laughs> Lieber booted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You could survive like that, I think. So do let us know why you stick with all this nonsense in the face of so much opposition. You can email us, show at linuxafterdark.net. But we'd better get out of here. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. But until then, I've been Joe. I've been Chris. I've been Gary. I'm still having an identity crisis. (laughs) We'll see you later. (laughs)